G'day guys and gal. A lot of things in life are pretty rogue. Your dad turning out to be a closeted homosexual was pretty rogue. Your dog identifying as a cat was pretty rogue. And the merchants that fly around the Milky Way buying and selling stuff with all kinds of man, mutant and xeno are also pretty rogue. Rogue is a fun word to use in your day to day. It's mischievous, but not necessarily bad. That definition is pretty spot on for the rogue traders of 40k. The history of rogue traders is ancient. In early day 40k lore, they were the main focus of the setting, while shit like the Imperium and Chaos were just background noise. And whilst their lore has evolved to make them more Imperial aligned, one thing has remained consistent. The rogue traders are first and foremost, free. Free from prosecution and Imperial lore. Free from all the random bullshit that the High Lords decree on daily basis. Obviously, if they start sacrificing babies for Slanesh, they'll get blown up, but they are allowed to hang out with Xenos and even trade with them. One rogue trader even talked about an Eldar lockbox he got as a gift from the Eldar in the presence of a Black Templar, and he didn't get killed. That's how free they are. That freedom has made them very, very wealthy. But did you know that being a rogue trader and selling shady goods to dodgy people isn't the only reliable way to make cash in this world? There is also the wildly convenient option of filling out surveys on opinion outposts. That's right, for once in your life, people will not only care about your opinion, but actually pay you for it. It's as simple as clicking my link below, signing up, then BAM! Fill out surveys to your heart's content and watch your PayPal go green, boy. Sounds pretty good, eh? Thank you Opinion Outpost for sponsoring this video. Today we'll go over what a rogue trader is, where they come from and why they are given such lax rules from the otherwise extremely controlling Imperium. We'll then go over what they're currently up to in the setting. Let's get into it. Rogue traders have been flying around since the dawn of the Imperium. They aren't random pirates or factions that the Imperium reluctantly deals with, no. They are officially endorsed and often created by the Imperium to go explore and discover shit the Imperium can't be stuffed doing. Pretty much the entire galactic budget goes into military spending, not science expeditions or arts and culture, hence the rogue traders are funded to kinda carry the team there. A rogue trader will generally be a rich or high ranking imperial official, maybe even an ex-inquisitor who expresses the desire to not have the ecclesiarchy trying to shove their big ass hats down their ass every 20 minutes. They can also be generals who want to push the boundaries of their crusade with the imperium's permission. To be a rogue trader is to be free, and it is a very attractive life for the few who can afford it. Often rogue traders will be ancient families who pass their wealth and resources down each generation to a worthy descendant. I mean, the very first rogue traders were the powerful rivals of the Emperor who had bent the knee to him, but he did not trust them enough to allow them to stay on Terra. Regardless of how they came to be, their job is simple. Don't fall to chaos and do whatever the fuck you want. Yeah, it's a pretty good gig. Some rogue traders consider themselves Imperial diplomats who work closely with Imperial forces and report back regularly, whilst others are like, cheers for the ship and the 20 billion dollars, see ya never, fuckhead. Regardless of their attitude, their actions generally end up benefiting the Imperium anyway. They explore uncharted areas and uncover precious artifacts, or even entire civilizations that the Imperium gladly pays them for. They can act as the middlemen between the Imperium and Xenos, and they're a great source of information. To be clear, the term Rogue Trader is reserved for the captain of the ship or the fleet. The crewmen and mercenaries are not Rogue Traders, even if they spend their whole life working with one. Hence, the bullshit fuckery a rogue trader gets up to, and is allowed to get up to, doesn't necessarily extend to his crew. A good way to think of them is like an inquisitor without a stick up their ass. They can have ships, warriors and a retinue, but at the end of the day, they are the inquisitor. Their retinue and resources are not. Same logic. Does it make sense? Sure. Let's continue. So we've kinda covered why the rogue traders are given so much freedom, in that it makes them more effective at exploring because they can go on more hectic adventures without concern about being called a heretic or a cocksucker by the Imperium. But what happens if an Imperial citizen with a bunch of money tries to do this? Well, they get fucked on and called a heretic and a cocksucker. See, for you to go off and do whatever you want, you either need an inquisitorial rosette, be a custodes, be a first founding space marine chapter, or for the rogue traders, have a warrant of trade, which is more than just a piece of paper. 
A warrant of trade is what establishes a rogue trader dynasty, and it can be passed down generation to generation. You need to have one of these to be a rogue trader, and they are only issued by the imperial government. On the flip side, these warrants can be removed from rogue traders if the rogue traders begin to act against imperial interests. Now that's a pretty broad term, but basically any wacky generally illegal shit that a rogue trader does is okay, as long as it can be considered for the betterment of mankind. For example, if a rogue trader visits a craft world, plows some Aldari puss, and then comes back to the Imperium to share his discoveries about Xeno autonomy, then all is good. But if he goes in, plows some puss, then during some pillow talk, leaks information about a strike team that's about to attack a maiden world, well, then he can get into all sorts of strife. In saying this, not all warrants of trade are equal. Some can be dated back to the dawn of the Imperium, and they have the literal God Emperor of Mankind's signature on them, hence it's pretty frowned upon to revoke a warrant of trade that has the handwriting of your God on it. Other significant warrants are signed by Primarchs, or other extremely important figures, so the rogue traders that possess those warrants generally have more power and influence than let's say a rogue trader who was given a warrant of trade last Tuesday because he won the raffle. Some warrants are conditional, and force some rogue traders to only do business in certain zones, or they might be forced to check in regularly with Imperial officials. Some warrants might even have a to-do list on them, such as shoot this bitch or pacify this world, before the rogue trader is given true freedom. The baseline is that despite not all warrants being equal, the warrant itself is an incredibly powerful and desirable thing, and it's often used for political leverage. No two rogue traders are the same. Like sure, they're all a bunch of rich egomaniacs, but there are different distinct types of rogue traders based on their behavior. One type is the scoundrel, who are generally the most rogue of the rogue traders. The scoundrels are the pirates of the rogue traders, exploring and plundering to their heart's content, trying to build up a legend as they perform brave and daring feats. They seek fame and adventure above all else. Another type is the merchant, who just love money, they love it. These fucking money sluts do everything they can to set up trade lines and businesses in every corner of the galaxy. Their aid will always go to the highest bidder. They seek fortune above all else. The next type is the explorer. They fulfill a similar role to the scoundrel, except for the fact that they aren't massive dicks about it. They explore for the sake of exploring, and don't need to wear an eye patch and sail the black flag to do it. Their job is filling in blank spots in Imperial maps and cataloging new Xenos and worlds. The explorer type is the most pure and accurate version of the Emperor's vision of the rogue traders, and they will often find themselves suspiciously lucky, almost as if the big golden skelly dad is watching over them proudly. They seek the unknown above all else. Now we talking missionary, we talking missionary, we talking when she's on top and I'm on the s sorry, 22 Jump Street's a good movie, you should watch it. The missionary is basically a rogue trader who gets sucked off by the ecclesiarchy. It's the church's way of bypassing a lot of restrictions to get a powerful force to go to imperial or human worlds that have been lacking a bit of faith. These guys are by far the least fun of the rogue traders to hang out with, and refuse to have any kind of intercourse with Xenos or anyone over the age of 9. They seek spreading the Imperial cult above all else. Next up is the Diplomat, who cops the most shit out of all the other rogue traders. This is because the Diplomat will seek out rogue human empires, and even Xenos, to establish a relationship between them and the Imperium. It is the Diplomat who prevents conflicts between the different races, and often organizes various truces and ceasefires. For example, a craft world was once passing through Imperial space, and a diplomat rogue trader arranged for it to receive an Imperial escort, so no trigger-happy Xeno-hating commander would open fire on it and spark an all-out war that would be devastating for both sides. Diplomats aren't peace-loving hippies though. They will gladly step aside, or even join the war effort if diplomatic relations break down. They seek relationships above all else. Fucking simps. Now onto the psychopaths, who are more or less just rabid dogs who have been let off their leash. They are warlords and warmongers, who often act as mercenaries for the Imperium, or just go out and genocide non-Imperial cultures for the laughs. Honestly, they would make for a great antagonist in an Elder human book. Protagonist could be a diplomat who's trying to unite the Elder and an Imperial fleet to take on some orcs, but then a psychopath trader comes and tries to fuck it all up. There you go GW, I'll take a 15% royalty. These guys are as cringy as they are edgy. They call their ships shit like Scourge of Xenos or Fister of Urethra and other odd shit like that. They seek war above all else. 
Finally, the last rogue trader type is the trader militant, who are kind of a niche trader type. They are basically generals who are given warrants of trade so that they can continue waging wars and crusades in the name of the Imperium. This makes them a bit similar to psychopaths, however they fight their wars out of a sense of duty to the Imperium, and not just because they're a bunch of sadistic fucks. Generals who are awarded warrants of trade due to excellent service will often become a trader militant, at least initially. They value conquest above all else. So what are the traders currently up to? Well interestingly enough, after Gilliman clapped Chaos with the Indominus Crusade and then he vaccinated Ultramar against Nurgle, he sent out a summons to over 100 rogue traders to come for a meeting. Now, they were free to ignore the summons, but all 100 came because holy shit it's a Primarch. It was the largest gathering of rogue traders there has been since the dawn of the Great Crusade. That one meeting room alone would have had enough money to make Elon Musk look like a starving AIDS ridden African child. Gilliman was like, even though the Imperium has been cut in half and we are besieged on all sides and the Tyranids are probably going to eat us all, it's actually a really good time to explore and colonize new worlds. Am I right? And the rogue traders were like, well, I mean, no, but go on. Then Gilliman basically requested that the 100 rogue traders go out into unexplored areas and colonize new worlds for the Imperium that are untouched by the horrors of war. Once again, this was a request that all the rogue traders could have refused, but every single one of them accepted. I mean, who is going to turn down Space Jesus? Come on. Hence, so after receiving cryogenically frozen colonists from Ultramar, the rogue traders went out into the darkness to bring mankind's taint, <coughs> sorry, I mean righteousness to more planets. So far, some of the rogue traders have succeeded, some of them have been destroyed, and others are still floating around. To be honest, it sounds like a great setup for a book. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, then Patreon is the place to be. Where only $1 per month give you access to a boatload of Warhammer Hentai. Hit the subscribe button, then hit the real subscribe button for more rogue content. Join the Discord for more memes, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.